Even for an unprecedented year where 16 teams make it to the postseason, these guys still couldn't cut the mustard. That's laughable. At least in more than a few instances. The rest just didn't have a chance. For these 14 teams, the future will have to be considered. To whom will we be discussing? There was a slight chance of the improbable happening. Early in September, the Orioles were hovering around 500 and looking to slip in as the 8th seed in the AL. To probably get their asses kicked, but they decided to experience that earlier than that. They eagerly took their beatings from their opponents for the rest of the season. At this point, the O's might be better off bunnying the remainder of Chris Davis' contract. It's getting outright depressing to watch him be a shell of his former self. That's not to say it was a bad season for Baltimore, for it was crucial in their development as a team. They got to see the much-anticipated debut of Ryan Mountcastle. Anthony Santander's developing into a legit Major League bat. They got a nice return from Michael Givens. It's going to take a lot longer to get back to legitimacy, but they're on the right track. That's all you can hope for at this point in time. Throughout the entirety of the land, not a single fuck was given for their plight. The Boston Red Sox are absolutely terrible. May we all bask in this self-induced glory, particularly Yankees fans. The thing with the Red Sox is simple. They have no pitching. It was either injured, been traded for whatever they can get, or you're Eduardo Rodriguez, in which case I want to punch air because fuck coronavirus. Most of the big weapons on the team were duds in the case of Benintendi and J.D. Martinez. But all it means is that Devers, Bogarts, and Verdugo are being wasted. Still doesn't do anything about their god-awful pitching situation or declining talents. God forbid the Red Sox have to sell at the deadline instead of lord over us all. And not a single person feels bad for them. You reap what you sow when you cut payroll. If they suck enough, does it count since no fans were there to see it happen? You got to see Casey Mize make his Major League debut, and that was pretty much all the good you could get. This is even considering that the Tigers were also within striking range for a playoff spot for the first month of the year. Then reality smacked them across the face with a dueling glove. Detroit rightfully cowered in fear. They were punching above their weight and it came time for the inevitable. It felt like another year of drifting for the Tigers, but it has more of a tragic end than seasons past. Ron Gardenhire has most likely managed his last game in the majors. Health issues flared up on him this year, and with the fear of coronavirus complicating them, he stepped down from his role. He was probably gone after this year either way, but it's a tough way to go out. The Tigers are dangerously close to being lost at sea. They'll need to right the ship with proper development, lest they get caught in the same cycles that doomed them in the 90s. It might already be here. The final twilight of that past World Series glory. This is the curtain call no one wants to see, but is inevitable. The only other thing for fans to look forward to are the debuts of Brady Singer and Chris Bubich. The emergence of Brad Keller helps to ease the pain. Some optional comedy of the dust that once was Matt Harvey may also be considered. Even for their losing, the Royals now have to say goodbye to more of their past heroes. Salvador Perez had a strong season, but his contract expires after next year. He might have priced himself out of the Royals' plans. Alex Gordon has stated that this shortened season will be his last. He is retiring from baseball. As the pieces of the 2015 championship leave one by one, all that are left will be the memories. Sadly, no one will care because the Chiefs are looking really good across the street. Why are you the way that you are? Why must you do everything in your power to sabotage your own efforts to build a team? Why in God's name is Artie Moreno still allowing himself to intensively meddle in team operations? I get it, he wants to win, but he's been doing it wrong since he's bought the team. You hired Joe Madden, the big name manager, yet forget to realize that his tactical decisions reek of overconfidence in his own abilities. He can't micromanage anymore. And with that bullpen, even Danny Murtaugh himself couldn't work his magic to make them look decent. You brought in Shohei Otani and then immediately killed him. And then you had him pitch again just before allowing him to get run over by a bus. Dylan Bundy emerged out of nowhere, but he'll demand premium money soon. The hitters have wealth disparity rivaling Haiti and the Dominican Republic. The results are just as jagged. Pools is cooked, Otani struggled at the plate as well, and what the hell happened to Justin Upton? I'd ask Andrelton Simmons to save him, but he opted out a few days before the end of the year. The Angels need another scapegoat for this failure, so Billy Epler, step up and be this team's next sacrifice. You've learned absolutely nothing over the past few years, and you're leaving Mike Trout to die in the hot California sun. And David Fletcher, too. I expect Moreno to throw even more money at the problem in the offseason instead of, you know, identifying the main problem. He probably won't like what he sees in the mirror. Can it even be a punch in the dick if the Mariners weren't expected to do much of anything this season? I think the mostly terrible hitting probably is enough of a low blow to cause mild discomfort. 
It comes with the disclaimer of Kyle Seeger bouncing back and Austin Nola emerging out of nowhere. Nola was then flipped for a nice return of prospects and short-term help. Not bad dealing. Kyle Lewis is the new face of the future. He's a nice replacement for Mitch Hanniger, who is still trying to recover from literally being hit in the dick. Jared Kalanick looks really good as well, so there may be some more elite talents to waste in the future. If only the Mariners could find some semblance of a stable pitching staff, perhaps then there may be some hope for the future. A team ERA over five isn't going to cut it. There comes a time when karma strikes a team with such precision that we can only be awed by its accuracy. When a team flaunts such bullshit that even the gods will smile in glee. This. This right here. This is called the impetus for such karma. After this grand slam, the Rangers would have a pissy fit. The Padres broke the unwritten rules, they cried. They scored more runs on a 3-0 count in an untimed game. Think of our poor hurt feelings and shattered egos. Texas just looked like a bunch of whiny bitches and everyone then rooted for them to fail. Even the gods did. After that moment, the Rangers would outright implode on and off the field. They stumbled downward to the second worst record in baseball and mangled their trade assets. Last season, they couldn't trade Mike Miner at the deadline due to demanding too much for him. They traded him this time for a significantly lesser return than they would have gotten. They had other chances to not fuck up with Lance Lynn and Joey Gallo this season. John Daniels learned nothing. He demanded too much and was stuck with goods that will decrease in value yet again. Is it against the unwritten rules to criticize this sort of terrible asset management? I want to put it by them first since they're a bunch of overly sensitive ninnies. I know people accuse me of using the Mets as a crutch, but they make it too easy. There may be fresher memes in the baseball landscape, but Low Mets is pot roast on a Sunday night. Comfort food that will always be there for you. The fantastic main course of a team that should make the playoffs easily self-destructing never gets old. The appetizers differ, but are just as indulgent. Marcus Stroman was brought in last year to solidify the pitching core. He got injured before the season and opted out of play the second he was eligible for free agency. Ioannis Cespedes also opted out, but promptly fucked off and told no one that he left. The Mets treated it as if it were a missing persons case. I'm more surprised Cespedes didn't get injured on the way out. Brody Van Wagenen criticized Rob Manfred's out-of-touch pandering to sensitive issues on a hot mic. And then team ownership immediately threw him under the bus while misspelling his name on both press releases. That surprisingly wasn't the most heinous scandal BVW did this year. That would be inexplicably buying assets at the deadline. They had injuries in their starting rotation, but there was no reason as to why they shouldn't have made the playoffs again. Even for Pete Alonso losing all coordination at the plate, it's another case of lol Mets. Sadly for us that laugh at them, it may all be over soon. The Wilpons are finally releasing their grip on the team. Steve Cohen threw endless wads of cash at them to sell their overrated clown show. Maybe the Mets will now become a real big market team instead of a lol cow. I hope not, if only to keep my easy targets and cheap jokes. Think of the memes, Uncle Steve. You are pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. You invest over $500 million in player salaries the past two seasons, and still you can't achieve a record over 500. Forget about the playoffs. How about you manage to address the significant issues that have been festering for years instead of paving the gold streets with diamonds? That wasn't the problem. The hitting core was fantastic. Bryce Harper was outstanding. The supporting cast was strong and flush with depth. Alec Boom! Nola, Wheeler, and Eflin were a strong three-headed monster in the rotation, even with the husk of Arietta holding them back. That kind of production should be competing for a World Series. So what was the problem? They forgot the bullpen again. We burned all of our money at FAO Schwartz. Let's just get the nuts and bolts of the team from behind this dumpster. Their best option was, yet again, Hector Neris. A seventh inning guy at best. Guess they better die for more scraps. David Phelps, Heath Hembry, Brandon Workman, add more gasoline onto the tire fire. That's great. It all leads to one of the worst bullpens in baseball's history. With a combined ERA of over seven! The only team that was worse in the season were the Phillies of 1930. This is catastrophic failure. A team with World Series ambitions self-destructs in a division full of it. Fortunately, this team had their best moment since Ruin Tomorrow Jr. got fired. Matt Klintak suffered the same fate. I know it's a shitty time, Phillies, but if you think this is bad, just wait until JT Riomuto gets poached by the Mets. With what he may want, it's either him or the bullpen. I'd feel bad, but honestly, I don't. You sold your souls for that World Series. 
It might be worth it now, but the devil always demands payments for such a prize. Just ask the city of Houston how that's gone since their Astros won it. Any sort of magic or power that the team had during their run was sapped from them. The team didn't just experience a hangover, it was a borderline coma. The moment Steven Strasburg was ruled out for the season, they were in trouble, but I didn't exactly expect this. The hitting featured the talents of Juan Soto, Trey Turner, and more Juan Soto. The pitching was Max Scherzer desperately trying to carry an increasing amount of dead weight piling up throughout the weeks. Once again, a majority of the key players from the World Series run just... died. No Ryan Zimmerman didn't matter, he would have been nothing. The honeymoon's over, boys. I think it may be time for a soft reset. Flush the depth, reload on the prospects. They've had some struggles developing this season, but I trust my Grizzo to guide the ship in the right direction. A team that didn't make it from the NL Central. I don't see such a thing. You know why? Because I don't see the Pirates as a real baseball team. Was what you saw this season anything resembling a baseball team? Fuck no, it was a tank job while barely attempting to tank. A bunch of bats overachieved last season. It showed as most production dipped harder than the March recession. Nearly everyone regressed on both sides of the ball. Everyone. While we got to see the horror of Cole Tucker in the outfield, their best hitter for the first month was Colin Moran. That is all. What point is there in selling off assets when everyone has literally no value to sell off? A return on interest? Not on this team! It was bad enough that it became the worst team in baseball by a country mile. And the best option was to just not care about it. Cabrian Hayes, you're really good and this may suck, but you'll be free of this hellhole in five years when you'll demand real money. This isn't just wreckage. It's the aftermath of a nuclear blast. It'll take years to even start fixing the mess this past regime left. Let me take a guess as to what happens next. The team's top prospect gets into a drunk driving accident in his home country, kills three people, and is probably going to jail for manslaughter. I am fucking Nostradamus! Next, we will find out that Manny's barbecue stand is a front for steroid distribution because this is how this shit works. Dude, what the fuck? Weren't you supposed to be competing for a playoff spot this season? I know you're fond of roller coasters, but all you did was go down and down and down. The crash? That happened throughout the descent. Starling Marte was flipped at the deadline for a middling return, less than what you technically paid for him. Robbie Ray was one of the hottest pitching commodities in baseball last season. He imploded so badly that he was traded for a guy who wasn't even on his team's top 30 prospect list. I mean, they at least got something for him, unlike Jake Lamb. He slumped so hard that he got cut, was immediately swiped up by Oakland, and returned to old form just as fast. Mad Bum's descent started a hell of a lot faster than any of us expected. You've got four more years of this shit, D-backs. At this point, I don't know what you do if you're Arizona. When you try to tank, the team pulls wins out of their ass. When you try to compete, the bottom falls out faster than a prolapsed anus. It is an eternal circle of torment with no seeming end. I do not envy them for the tough decisions they'll have to make. How can I say this? This year was the combination of years of personnel fuck-ups with the delusions that this team already had the pieces in place for a big push. Hell has come to Denver. It didn't even look like it in the beginning. They were the best team in baseball with an 11-3 record. Charlie Blackman was chasing a 400 batting average. There was harmony in the locker room. Did somebody cling a glass? Because here comes the avalanche to bury us all to an early death. It would explain Charlie Blackman's disappearance at the plate in the final month of the year. It just grounded out, ironically like most of his at-bats. And that bullpen. The only saving grace for this mess is that Phillies was worse. They threw money at big names and it blew up spectacularly. Jake McGee, Brian Shaw, Wade Davis? All gone in the span of three months. Their contract swallowed like an oral suppository. Playoff contenders? You were playing Matt Kemp regularly. You don't do that in 2020 if you're serious about it. Nolan Arenado was also nowhere near Arenado, and now they may have another problem festering in their ranks. Apparently, when he's not around the team, the clubhouse atmosphere is significantly better. Is he past his expiration date here? Not that Jeff Breidich would care, since the levels of delusion within the executive branch are as high as the Rocky Mountain air. Maybe it will stall out like Brendan Rodgers did this year. Something tells me that you didn't expect to be as good as you were, weren't you? I get it, I'm surprised too. When you're a literal tiebreaker away from a playoff spot when no one expected you to get that far, it's respectable. But at this point, I don't know where you go from here. You saw the debut of Joey Bart, and that's great. But have you seen the makeup of their roster? The majority of their hitting core, including the new wave of talent, is in their early 30s. Their second baseman of the future is going to be 33. 
The pitching core is full of a combination of bloated old contracts and reclamation players who, wait for it, are going to be in their early 30s. The Giants said their final goodbyes to Pence and Sundoval this year, and I think more will be on the way. This isn't doom and gloom whatsoever. This is a golden opportunity for the franchise. Did you see the return Seattle got for Austin Nola? If Zaidi is smart, he can turn this into a watershed offseason for the team. Selling high on Yastrzemski and Dickerson, among others, may further restock the prospect pool if they're smart about it. I think they know they aren't true contenders, but they can get back there if they're wise. Do the right thing, Farhan. That's drilled out to left field. This one's got a chance to get out of here, and it does! Big fly for Albert Pujols. 661st of his career, and he stands alone in the number five spot all time on the home run list. Yeah, the machine rolling by now to say, hey, kid.